Hey, this is Wes. In this video, we're gonna take a look at how we can create some water drops and condensation on something like an aluminum can using Substance Painter. So it's a pretty cool technique. Let's jump in and take a look. Here is the water drop and condensation effect that we're gonna create in this video. So let's get started and build this from scratch. So I'm gonna start here in my layer stack and let me just turn off this folder group that I have and we're gonna start here from a blank canvas. Now, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a fill layer. Let me drag it out to the top and I'm gonna call this base. This is gonna be my base uh, material that I'm gonna start working with. Now, I have a couple of these uh, labels that were created, so this can be created in something like Photoshop or Illustrator. Uh, in this case, I'm gonna use this green version. Left click, drag and drop, and just place it here on the base color. So it just applies, I'm using uh, just the UV projection. If we take a look at the UVs, you can see that the UVs are expanded to fill the zero to one space uh, completely. And so now I have my label. However, one problem with this is the label's backwards. So here at the top of the UI, I can just click this flip horizontal button. I'll do that. And now I have my label uh, flipped correctly. Okay. Next thing that we want to do is start to play around with the metallic value. So I want this to be an aluminum uh, bottle. So I'm going to take the metallic value, set it to one. And then I'm also going to play around with this roughness information. Now, instead of just using this uniform slider, I always like to add a little bit of roughness variation. So um, just to keep it kind of simple, what I'm gonna do is just add a map directly here to this roughness channel. So I'll click the button. I'm going to do a search here for grunge rough. I like to use this grunge rough dirty map quite a bit. So I'm gonna use this option. Now I can't change the tiling in this particular case, specifically the way that I've added this map as part of this base, because if I change my tiling, it's going to mess up my label. However, it's, I think it's gonna work as is, not a problem, but I do want to adjust some of the values here for this map. A quick way to do that, I add a levels effect here to the layer and set the affected channel to roughness. Now what I'm gonna do is just change the output black and white points. So you can see I'm doing this here. And the idea is that I just am trying to get very, very subtle variation to that roughness. So it's not something that's gonna be like super, super apparent, but again, it's very, very subtle, but a lot of times that kind of subtle control is what really helps sell uh, things, especially when you're creating your materials. Okay, so that's gonna take care of the base. Now, the next thing we wanna do is start adding the water drops. So once again, I'm going to click to add a fill layer. Let's call this water drops. And for my material settings, I'm gonna start this off by just using height information. So I will hold down the Alt key and click. That's gonna disable all the channels I have except for height. And then I'm gonna increase this height value just a little bit. We're gonna adjust this in a, in a little later once we start to get some values in here. But one thing I wanna to bring to your attention I am using height information, which is converted to normal. However, in this case, if I jump over to my shader and I go to my displacement and tessellation tab, you'll notice that I did change the height scale from zero to 0 0.04. So I'm actually going to be displacing this geometry a bit. And then I have my subdivision count just increase pretty high. So this will be more apparent once we start adding some values. And speaking of, let's go ahead and mask this height information. So we're going to create a black mask the mask selected, I'm going to add a fill. And now I need to add some type of map into this grayscale input. And for that, I'm gonna do a search here for Gaussian. And there's a couple options. I like to use this one, Gaussian Spots 1. So we'll select Gaussian Spots 1. Already we can start to see something. Uh, kinda looks like some dents. Uh, could be something great for another project, but not really what I'm going for. So let's take a look at the mask. If I hold down the Alt key and, and just left click on the mask, I can view it directly really quick. And I'm not gonna change my balance option, but I'm just going to increase the contrast. And you can see that that just kind of clips everything out and just gives me uh, some of these uh, you know, spots here, which is kind of what I'm looking for. They, they already kind of look like little water drops. Uh, getting close. Let's make some changes to the tiling. So we'll come over here to the properties fill. And for the tiling, I'm just gonna set it to a value of four. So now we're starting to get, you know, well, some more density here to these water drops. 
Something else that's interesting is if I come over here to the noise parameter and I play with the disorder, I can just change this and randomize this noise. So this will come in handy for some other, um, you know, some other layering that we're going to do a little bit further down in the video. So for now, this is what my mask looks like. Let's hit M on the keyboard to go to my material mode. And now we're starting to get some of these little drops here. If I zoom in really close, you can see that I am indeed actually displacing the geometry. Now we are getting a problem here where the height information is being clipped. You can see you get this flat plane. I definitely don't want this. this you have this kind of artifacting, this kind of jaggy look. We don't want any of this, but don't worry, we're gonna fix that right now. What I really wanna do is I wanna create just kind of a nice slope fall off, and I definitely don't want to have this just clipped uh, or clamped here at the top. So what can we do? Uh, let's just jump back over here to our mask. And I am now going to add, I'm going to add a new filter. And for the filter, I'm gonna choose this slope blur filter. So we'll select the slope blur. Already it's looking kind of strange. Let's take a look at the mask. So Alt, left click on my mask. And now I can see the mask. Uh, let's make some changes to this. Uh, first things first, uh, I have this intensity value, uh, but I really need to change my source parameter. So it's using this default noise, which is creating this chipped looking effect. I don't want this. I need to use something, uh, I need to use something different. And to do that, I will click the drop down and choose custom noise. And if I scroll down a little bit further, I have this image input. Okay, so this is what I need. Let's click this button and now let's find a new noise. What I'm looking to do is I'm looking to create a little bit of like a, a streak. And so if you're using slope blur, which is just going to blur the value that I have here by some type of image input, well, a great way to create a streak would be to blur based on a gradient. And so we do have this gradient linear one. This is going to work great. So let's select this option. Now with the gradient noise, if I come back here to my intensity, and I can drag this up. You can see something is happening. Now it caps at one, but we can overdrive this. So for example, if I set this to 12, now I'm really definitely getting a streak. You can see what this is doing here. Okay, so uh, okay, I'm starting to get something, but what I wanna do is I don't want this to combine, uh, basically I don't want it to overwrite the shapes that I have below uh, in this way. I want to uh, change the blending mode. And that's a really powerful option that we have when working with filters here in Substance Painters that we can change uh, these blending modes. So let me click the blending mode and I am going to choose this option here for Max Lighten. And so what this is going to do is you can see that it retains that original shape, but now I have this streak. This is awesome, you can see in this particular case for doing something like leaks or streaks or something like that in a different scenario. But in my case for this water drop, I want to create more of a tear shape for the drop. And I'm using slope blur to help produce that effect. Okay, so first off, I can see it's going in the wrong direction. So if we move down, we have this rotation for that custom noise. Let's set that to 180. Okay, so now I've switched the direction. I think I need to come over here to the intensity. It's a little too much. I just wanna just, it's a slight little effect. So I'm gonna do something like this here. So I'm starting to get this kind of streak, but uh, it's, it's not giving me the result I need. So one more step to this is I need to come over here to my effects. We're going to add a filter. For the filter, we're going to choose just a blur. So we'll add blur, and I can increase this a little bit. And now this blur is helping me kind of merge these shapes together. And if I zoom in, you can see that, okay, this is starting to give me a little bit of this kind of tear shape that I want to work with. Again, if I jump back to that slope blur and I set it to, let's say, zero, you can see what I'm trying to do here. Just extend and get this little bit of a tear shape. It almost, the idea here, of course, the water drop is maybe, you know, it's starting to just drip down the can. That's what we're going for. This, of course, is too blurry. Uh, so now what I'm going to do is just add a levels on top of all of this, and let's just process uh, these value ranges. So to do that, I'm going to take my input black and just move it towards the input white. And then I'm going to take the mid-range value and just push it towards the uh, black. And now I'm getting something like this. What I'm starting to get that I really want is this nice kind of gradient fall off. And it's more of like a pill shape. So now if I hit the M on the keyboard to go to my material mode, 
this is what the drops are starting to look like. Let's zoom into the side again. So you recall earlier what we had was that height information was being clipped. Now we're starting to get this nice kind of sloped fall off. And this is what I wanted to go with originally. We can always jump back to say our blur and, and tweak this a little bit more. Okay, I like that even more. So just intensify it slightly. Uh, it's starting to get more of like a pill shape. Uh, that's, that's exactly what I was going for. And we start to get these little dots here. Uh, something else we can do is again, drop back to that Gaussian spots and play around with the disorder and just kind of move and randomly, uh, you know, adjust this to get different types of patterns and effects. What's really neat is I love how you get shapes like this. So you, it's almost like the water drops, you know, just like in reality, as soon as they kind of hit, they merge together. So it's, it's a pretty cool effect. Now, at this stage for this layer, you'll notice that, you know, we're just working with height information, and that's perfect because my color, the metal, the roughness, all that is coming from this base layer, and it's just being pushed up the layer stack here. So, so what we get is something kind of interesting. If you look at, like, the water drop here where you can see the R. So even though I'm not doing something sophisticated, like I'm not using opacity, I'm not using translucency, and I'm not worrying about IOR, but in this particular case, since we're all we're really doing using height is this is like a displacement map for the uh, label that we are creating. So it kind of gives me this kind of translucent, you know, um, refractive look to this water drop without me having to use any of that kind of complicated shader. So it's a, it's a cool little trick. However, there is one thing I, I want to do. Like I said, all that information is being passed up from that base. And the roughness value, uh, I, I think that I want these water drops to have a different roughness value. So what I'm going to do is just uh, turn on my roughness channel here and then just decrease the roughness value. So now I get something that's, that looks like this. So it's more reflective because it's a, a, an actual like water drop. It's more uh, reflective than the actual roughness that's being used for the aluminum can uh, below. So let's continue to the next step. So I'm going to take my water drops, hit Control-D to duplicate the layer, and we're going to call this water drops small. Uh, so first thing, I'm going to come over to the height information, and I'm going to lower this quite a bit. And we're going to jump over to our masking effects here. Let's just turn off everything except for the Gaussian spots. And I'm going to set the, uh, let's see, the tiling here. Let's do something a little bit higher, like, say, 12. The idea here is that I'm just trying to get some of these little small dots. Maybe, let's see, what's 8 do? Um, yeah, I think I'm going to go with, uh, let's go with 10. Split the difference. Okay, so I have these in place. Uh, here, let's turn on these little spots. I don't want to use the slope blur. Let's see, what does blur do? I think it's going to be too intense. Yeah, so we're just going to leave uh, the Gaussian spots without these other effects. I can even just, you know, kill these uh, effects here. So we just have the Gaussian spots. And I'll come over to the noise parameters and play around with uh, the disorder. Just, you know, kind of randomize this. Now, one problem that I'm having, if I zoom in really close, I can see, well, you know, the spots are blending together in, in, in a very strange way. And that has to do with the blending modes for the given channels. So, for example, on this layer, we're working with height. Let's choose the height channel. And the blending mode is set to add. And we don't want to add. What I want to do is switch this to max lighten because this is going to combine. And you can see here that this combines in a way with my height information. So this is not adding height. We're just using a maximum value. And then what I need to do is probably just drop this height value down even lower. So let's try something like 0.04, uh, maybe even a little bit lower, 0.03. There we go. I think that's going to work. And so now we have these little drops, and then we have these kind of medium level uh, water drops. So let's take this even further, one more level. It's always great to add variation and scale to any of these types of effects. So let me go back here to my original water drops, hit Control D once more. We're going to drag it towards the top, and let's change the name. This is going to be large. And now what we're going to do is come over here to that original Gaussian spots. Let's go to the properties fill. And instead of four, I'm going to try something like two. So the idea here is that I just want to get some larger spots. Now what I can do in this case is take my height information and increase this just a little bit more since these are going to be larger water drops. 
and I'm just taking a look at what this is going to do. We're having that same problem with the comp with with how things are combining. So let's choose our height channel information. Again, we're going to set this from add. We don't want to add. We want to do a, a max operation. And there we go. That'll stop some of that intersecting issues that we were running into. And now it's just a matter of coming over here to this Gaussian spots. And then just let's just play around here with things like the disorder. Let's just move some of these drops out of the way. So now what you're getting is some larger spots, some medium, and then some small. And this is going for that overall look. Now, because these are larger, what I could do is maybe play around with the, the, you know, the shape. So maybe the slope blur, maybe I need to increase this just a little bit more. So here, let's overdrive this to say something like four uh, and see what that does. Yeah, maybe that works. Okay, we could, do a, we could do something like that. And then if I need to, I can, I can blur that shape even a little bit more. Okay, that looks pretty good. I think I'm going to go with that. So now we have these three levels of water drops that we want to work with. It's pretty much has everything in place. So the last stage of this is, so we have our water drops, but I really need to add uh, an even uh, kind of greater level of fidelity when it comes to my overall roughness. And so here I'm going to add one more layer of roughness that's going to, uh, that's going to basically kind of govern the, the overall value or intensity of the condensation itself. So with all that said, let's jump over here to our fill and we'll just call this condensation. And this is just gonna have roughness information. So I'm gonna alt left click just uh, to expose that rough value. And then we're going to use a black mask. We're going to create a fill for this mask. And then I'm gonna click this grayscale button once again, just searching for uh, some type of grunge noise that I'm gonna use here. So if I search for leaks, we do have this grunge map that we ship with called Grunge Leak Small, and this is actually perfect for what I want to do. You can see that it actually has some, some kind of leaks to it. So this is going to work great. So let's select this, and I'm going to Alt left click so I can get a view of my mask. So what I'm looking for here is these little kind of black paths. So this is like the water drop has been, you know, kind of dripping down the can and it's kind of leaving this trail behind it. This is going to help me create this effect. So let's play around with the overall, uh, maybe the contrast and the balance a little bit. So maybe something like this. I'll hit M to go back to my material mode. And now what I really need to do is jump over here to my roughness information and uh, just lower this value. So I get something that looks a little bit more like this. And I think what I want to do is, like, if I'm looking here at where these little trails are, uh, I think what I'm going to do is maybe try to invert that. So let's jump back over here to the grunge leak, and we'll click invert, see what that kind of does. And with that inverted, I'm going to play with that roughness value and get something uh, that looks a little bit more like this. So now you can see that we have get these, uh, you know, it's not perfect, it's not lining up exactly with the water drops, but, you know, it, it, it kind of really helps to sell the overall effect. So uh, now we, we get some of this kind of like path uh, that the, you know, as the drips are kind of moving down the can, we, we get some of these like paths. Uh, so this is what we're kind of looking for. Now, something else I'll do is let me jump back here to that base level. And now that everything is comes together, this is kind of usually the last stage when I'm working on materials is I have all these different levels, these different variations. And then there's always this pass at the end where you try to really kind of consolidate or, or, or bring everything into, you know, so it's just a little bit more harmonious, we'll say. Uh, so with that said, Let's come back to that roughness information that I had tweaked earlier, and let's just play with that a little bit. So I think what I'm going to do is try to just make the base can maybe just a little bit more rough, and that helps really kind of the makes the condensation, these kind of water drops coming down, it makes that really you know stand out a little bit more. So I think something like that is going to work. So now we have our entire effect in place. And you can see that, you know, for this particular project, it really wasn't a lot. We had like our base layer, we had three le levels of water drops, and then we had this kind of condensation layer on top of that. Of course, what you could do now is select all these layers. We'll place this into a folder and, you know, we can call this, uh, you know, water drops. Place all my layers into it like this. And now we've got a smart material that we can reuse on other projects. 
So that concludes this tutorial on Substance Painter, taking a look at creating some water drops and condensation. Hope you found some cool use cases and some new techniques. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you next time.